Welcome, welcome to another epic edition of Phaser World. This week is issue 218. We are heading full throttle into the release of Phaser 4 and gearing up for Phaser Editor version 5. There's a chunky devlog in this one, packed with updates, mostly from Ben, and plenty of new content to get excited about. From tutorials to game showcases, let's dive into all the action this week. The big milestone this week is the release of Phaser version 4, Release Candidate 1. This version marks the transition from beta to RC status, meaning most of the major features are locked in and now it's all about polishing and testing. RC1 brings in all the latest fixes and fully syncs up with Phaser version 3.88 main branch. You could try it out in the Phaser sandbox or grab it from GitHub or NPM using the beta tag. The finish line is in sight. Now onto our Phaser a showcase this week, let's take a look at two featured games built with Phaser. First up, Hussein Driver by Neuer System. It's a wild race experience packed with action. Think crazy stunts, big jumps and challenging terrain. You can cruise through hills, cities and even off-road environments. Plus, there are 13 unique vehicles to choose from. Want to make your own? You've got over 50 color options and designs to customize your ride. It's free on Google Play Store, so go check it out. Next, we've got Wasteland Racer a gritty top-down driving game inspired by 1983 ZX Spectrum Classic Trans Am. You're tearing across a post-apocalyptic desert, dodging hazards and managing your fuel and watching your engine temperature like a hawk. Because if it overheats, boom! You've only got three spare cards, so every move counts. Built by Game Dev Ray with Phaser, it's a love letter to retro gaming with a modern web twist. This week's tutorials offer some real gems, especially if you're working on performance or animation. First up, Fransor drops a fantastic walkthrough on optimizing your phaser free action games for mobile. He takes an honest look at one of its recent projects where performance was struggling hard. Low frame rates, memory strikes, laggy controls, the whole deal. But instead of scrapping it, he refactored smartly. He shows how objects pulling helps you reuse game objects instead of creating and destroying them every frame, which saves both memory and processing time. He also dives into optimizing the game loop logic minimizing the number of calculations per update cycle, and using spatial partioning techniques to help reduce collision checks. One of the most practical tips, avoid overusing event listeners and set up centralized control logic instead. It's clear, detailed, and perfect for anyone looking to polish up a mobile-friendly phaser game. The results, a buttery smooth 60 FPS experience, even on lower end devices. Next, we've got a deep dive into spine 2D animation integration with phaser. If you're tired of massive sprite sheets or want cleaner, more flexible, animations, this tutorial shows exactly how to bring in Spine Skirtle animation system. It covers everything, from exporting your character rigs in the Spine Editor, loading the assets into your phaser game, to playing and controlling animations in real time. You'll learn how to mix animations smoothly, set up triggers, and manage state transitions. Perfect for characters of lots of movement variety. Skeletal animation not only reduces file size, but also makes it easier to tweak or expand animations later on without redoing all your art. Plus, with Phaser 4 shaping up, knowing how to use Spine is going to give your game a real edge in terms of polish and performance. And if you hand around to the Phaser forms, there's been a ton of great conversations lately, especially around optimization tricks like using web workers to offload heavy logic, custom shaders for effects, and how to use ECS patterns with Phaser. If you're more of a tinker and try dev, dive in and experiment with some of these ideas. Check them out. Now we get to hear what the studio has to say. This week's dev vlogs are especially beefy, with major updates from Ben, Arian, and Zeke, let's break it down. Ben's devlog this week is a deep and technical look at what it took to get Phaser 4 RC1 ready. Here are the highlights. Snapshot unpre-multiplication fixes those weird dark fringes around snapshot images. He explains how WebGL handles pre-multiplied alpha and how Phaser now unpre-multiplies snapshots properly so exported textures look clean. Scissor updates. A bug was breaking camera rendering when filters were applied. It turns out WebGL scissor coordinates were getting cached in the wrong coordinate space. Ben fixed it by caching the actual WebGL values and not the screen space ones. Spine plugin adaption. Ben hacks the Phaser 3 Spine plugin to run in Phaser 4's new renderer, adapting it with new render node systems. It wasn't easy, textures appeared upside down, state management was tricky, but he got it working. Esotrick Software is reviewing it now, and a full Phaser 4 compatible Spine plugin might be on the horizon. Coming up, with RC1 out, the final release of Phaser 4 is next. Mostly polish and bug fixes left, Ben sums it up perfectly. Now the starter line is finally in sight. With Phaser 4, we have a foundation to make amazing new things. Arian's been busy prepping the next major version of Phaser Editor, version 5. Here's what's happening. Full compatibility of Phaser 4 include a new rendering system and updated effects, now called filters. The mask filter is now supported and all effects have been migrated. 
Spine 4.2 support is now baked in thanks to Ben's updates. The node scripts libraries and project templates have been reorganized and automated for easy updates. Build tools, digital sign and installers are ready to go. In short, Phaser Editor 5 is nearly done. It's launching almost simultaneously with Phaser 4, so keep an eye out. And Zeke's working towards the Phaser 3.89 release. Here's what's new. Rounded rectangles. You can now round corners on game dot objects rectangles using dot set rounded radius, a small but frequently requested feature. New math functions. Thanks to Sam, Phaser's math library now includes handy new angle tools. Get clockwise distance, gets counterclockwise distance, and gets shortest distance. Bitmap text scaling. Set display size now works with bitmap text, making UI scaling easier. Firefox Web Audio Fix. A fix for missing position XYC support on audio listener improves spatial audio in Firefox. There's been a ton of bug fixes, particle emitters, animation timing, physics collisions, text direction issues, and more. Next up for Zeke, polishing 3.89 and updating the docs. And that's a wrap for Phase of Old Issue 218. We've got Phase of 4 release getting closer, a ton of work behind the scenes, and some great new games and learner resources for everyone in the community. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, stay creative, keep coding, and I'll see you next time in the world of Phaser. I'll catch you later.